Amen. God does great things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I'll make sure you all have an announcement sheet. They're available in the foyer. And we're glad that you are here today, this nice, beautiful, sunny day. And uh, Tim Spear and I made it to North Platte on Friday in kind of a snowy day. But, you know, we prayed about it on Thursday, and I got peace about going, and we just said it's this, and the temperature looked pretty good, and actually the worst road was going to Red Cloud, and, and getting west of there, it got better, and really, it was really good all the way there, and, and just had a good time, and good wedding, got to see my sister and family, and, and some of my brother-in-law's family, too, and a bunch of people from McCook that I used to work with at the nursing home were there, and oh, it's a nice time, wonderful time. So God is so good. And we just welcome you all here today. We welcome everyone watching us online. We're just glad to have you here on Facebook Live. I'm Pastor John Albright. This is Living Faith Fellowship Church. Um, we have Bible Basics every Sunday morning from 9.15 to 10 a.m. How did your substitute teacher do? I bet she did great. Don Polly's doing a good job. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to do it now. Yay! <laughs> now, not that I didn't want to, but it's just then I don't get to do other things, and, and it, I'm just busy, busy. So I love that Don is doing that. Jane was gone, so Don Polly did that today. We're so thankful. Uh, Sunday Youth Connection with Mr. Royce at 9.30. Wednesday Morning Prayer at 10 a.m. Prayer for the Nation. Wednesdays, 6.30 to 7. Wednesday night refuel. We're getting close to being done with uh, Heaven's a Wonderful Place. And then we have our amped and crew and super kids. Amen. The healthy living class is tomorrow. So at 5.30, we'd love to have some more people come. It's a good group of people. Good stuff that we do together. Amen. Um, congratulations to the graduates. Can you believe it? It's just like... Cannot believe that the time is here and this is coming. We'll have to get some information on here too. We will do that for Marsha. Marsha's going to be graduating from Rama from second year, so that will be May 15th. So, in, uh, can you believe this? Yeah. She'll be graduating now. She has a choice and she's going to plan on going to third year. So, they, they changed things a little bit. And so, third year, they, you, you have your option to graduate second year or third year. So, we will get that on there. I need to make sure Kaylee's graduating. Who is? Kaylee. Oh, Kaylee is. Okay, well, let me, get me that too, please. We'll put that in there. Absolutely. Yeah, if anyone knows of anybody I've missed, let me know. Thank you. Put that in. We'll get that in the announcements. Okay, and as you're giving above and beyond um, your tithe and offering, our missions project for April is Covenant Cedars Bible Camp. So, please... Um, circle that. It touched my heart this morning. Leslie and Levi were in the youth building and we were waiting and, and um, they said, can we watch the camp videos? And Royce was getting them all and they're excited about going to camp. I was like, oh, I, it makes me excited. <laughs> and they're watching all the fun water games and all the things. They, this is going to be their first year and I just think, oh, it, that's going to be so cool, so neat. <laughs> So they're just getting real excited about it. And then building repair project, do you see? Um, James informed us that we had a walk, walk, a wall climbing wall, right? A, 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 what, do you, what do you call it, climbing wall? wall cli rock wall. Whatever it is, you're ready to go wall climb or whatever it is. Rock climbing, there we go. So that's what he thinks we're gonna do with that. Well, no. <laughs> but it's getting ready. So we have leftover stone from the front, so there's going to be some, that same rock that's out in the front is going to be there in the foyer. Isn't that going to look so neat? So we're getting excited about having that put in, and things are coming along with the building. So continue to, to give to that. That helps. We're so thankful. The 40th anniversary is coming. I'm giving out. If I missed anybody, let me know. We're going to make sure we get invitations to everybody. Some have been mailed. But we're, we're trying to get, get them out to everybody. And um, if you'd like to come to the banquet, we need to know by May 15th. 
And the best way, and we'll have to get that in the announcements, is to put it in the blue dotted envelope, put it in the gray box, your $10. And we kept it at $10 because that's what it was for the 30th. And you're going to get a big meal for $10. So, and the Lord also told me very much, too, that any minister, anybody who's an active ministry is going to have a, they and their spouse are going to have a free meal. Yes, Jane. Oh, yeah. Mother and sister came here and they were Well, Fran Reed, you're talking about. Fran, Fran is now with Dr. Berkowitz at the Mad Dinner. And so I don't think her name is Dr. Clark. Okay, thank you. Now, Fran lives in Junietta. Yeah, and she attends. They both, all live in Junietta. Oh, her sister does too, then. Yeah. Well, then Fran will make sure. I sent one to Fran. Oh, good. And okay. Pastor Chad, who, you know, she come, attends his church. He goes and picks her up every day, every Sunday and Wednesday. Wow. And she's a faithful attendee of his church. Yeah, Andrea started that few about a month ago, and I was so Okay, good, good. We'd love to have them there. That'd be great. That's what I'm saying. There's people, there's so many people. If we've missed people that have been here and you find out, let me know. Please let me know. This is a big job. Yeah. Ask Kathy Weist. Is this a big job? Yeah. I want to give kudos to Kathy Weist. She was here in the afternoon on Tuesday and didn't go home till what? 10 o'clock at night and she helped me out big time so I want to say thank you. I was doing, doing the best I can but you know I was trying, I wasn't pulling my hair but I think she could tell that I was getting a little like oh man there's a lot to do here and so she really helped me out. I want to just say thank you so much. That, that's a blessing. So we're getting excited about all these things. I just talked to Pastor Patsy, too. She is excited about coming. So it's, it's getting close, and we're, it's going to be a great time. Amen. Darren Tyler is coming. He's already booked his flight. Uh, Troy said he's going to do his best to come. So those are some that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I know that are coming. So it's just going to be a neat time. Amen. And then online giving, if you'd like to give this morning, um, online through PayPal, you can do that. We appreciate that. Um, our guest speaker, uh, Reverend Marvin and Leah Yoder, will be here Sunday, March 2nd. And he will be ministering during the, the service. And then Leah will be ministering during the mother daughter, mother, daughter, and friend luncheon. Is there anybody who has not got to sign up that wants to sign up? Did I miss anybody from last Sunday or this Wednesday? Is there anybody? Everybody signed up that wants to sign up? Okay, it's up here. If you change your mind, if you didn't tell me, it's right here. But we need to get that, the sign-up sheet taken care of on that. Okay. And then we do have, I just found this out too, because we were waiting to find out from the school. And we are going to have the baccalaureate service for the spirit class of, of 2021. And that will be Wednesday, May 6th. So what we do is we cancel the service on Wednesday. Yes. Is May 5th is Wednesday? Yes, May 6th oh. is the day of prayer. Oh, that's wrong then. Okay. Oh, no, I changed it. It says May 6th. This says May 6th on here. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's not good. <laughs> I'm glad you saw that. That is wrong. Okay. May 5th is a Wednesday. I'm sorry. And we are having baccalaureate service, so we will not have that Wednesday night um, church that night. No, it's at the Methodist Church. Yeah, it's at the Methodist Church. Pastor Natalie will be speaking, but other ministers will be helping with it. So, several years ago, yeah. So Wednesday, May 5th. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, and then the, look at the Wild Ladies. Look at that. That's the Mother Daughter Friend Luncheon. Look through that. National Day of Prayer. Now that is the 6th, yes. So that's going to be here. That's at 7 a.m., so we invite you to come for that. And then the 40th anniversary questions. Who, have, who has answered your 40th anniversary questions? Do you re oh, my goodness. Do you remember what I told you last week? If you were to do it, I would let you have a piece of candy before somebody takes it all. Uh, who do you think that might be? So if you, if you do it, you can come get yourself a piece of candy. So please go back to the usher station. Yes, Don. 
I think that's a fantastic idea. Don, our head usher, is going to hand them out to you, and you better take one, or he's going to he's going to stick it in your hand. And you better take one. <laughs> he's not going to leave until you take it. <laughs> okay, we want you. This is not a hard thing, but it's going to make you think. You have to answer two questions with a sentence. Each one is supposed to be answered with one sentence, not a whole paragraph, a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> And I, you know me, and I had to really work at it to answer it with a sentence on each one, and I did it. I got it done. God helped me do it. So please do that. It's going to be really neat. It's going to come across the screen. We're going to have a bunch of video, a bunch of pictures too, but this is going to be up there too, and it won't. It will just have your answer on there. It probably may not even have your name. So I don't know that it will for sure. Jane will take care of that, so it will be good. Okay, and then just remember the Bible study opportunities. Good morning, ladies at Arlett's this uh, Monday at 10 a.m., Grub and Grow here at 7 in Healing School um, at um, Thursday the 13th, May 13th, and May 20th. And let me just say this one more time. I want to thank everyone who did. We did the community, community dinner for... Grab and grow. That worked fantastic. You guys were so good about picking to do the, the food. You got the food here perfectly. We got it cooked. You guys loved it. We're going to do that again in June. We'll just keep doing that. Every time we have a, a cycle of rotation, we'll have a community meal where you can just choose an item to make. I just think that's a great thing. I think it's a Holy Ghost idea. So we're, we're going to keep doing that, and thank you all for helping with that. That's your way of helping, too, and we appreciate it very much. And then make sure you pray the prayer for the church leadership. So why don't you just go ahead and wave at everybody. One of these days we're going to get out here and start fellowshipping again, so it's soon. Wave at everybody. We love you. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. And I'll turn it over for Tim for the offering. Offering time, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we just encourage you this morning if you're tithe, just mark your envelope. And if you're giving above and beyond your tithe, we just about you and projects, uh, camp, great thing. project obviously is going along it's just like Pastor Don talked about all these things but just encourage you to be a part of what, what God is encouraging you to do and uh, it's great, it's a good time it's good and uh, there's a lot going on and we just have to be attentive to where God is talking to us and be willing to listen to him, amen so uh, I have a couple scriptures for you this morning 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and then verse 12 And it says, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. God doesn't want you to go out and get a loan so you can give. He wants you to give what you have. Now, he's not going to ask you to give something you don't have, but it might hurt a little bit. Let's say no. Even though you don't have it, you don't have to give it, but if you have it, you might have to let go of something. Okay, so this is the exciting verse down here. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 11. And it says, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen? You get some good stuff if your heart is open. The whole... To me, the whole idea of, of giving is not because God needs it. It's because he wants to make sure our heart's in the right place. He wants your heart to be in the right place. He wants your dependence upon him to be in the right place. You know, I'm dependent upon God as long as I can figure it out. As long as I can get it done myself. Then I'm, I can depend on God, right? That's what we think. That's what a lot of people think. But God wants us to be reliant upon him and trust him. And he knows, you know... Money's a money's an interesting thing. 
money is an inanimate object. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, you, money will just lay there and do nothing. But it can become very powerful. And it can be, become very destructive. But it can also become very great and bless and a blessing and encouragement. But uh, just, um, just so I just encourage you with it to know that um, what God's calling you to do, and He's going to take care of you. He's not going to leave you stranded. And there's a scripture that says his, he'll, you'll never see uh, his righteous breaking bread, right? So he'll take care of us. But we just need to be sensitive and listen. Amen? All right, well, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give. And, Lord, we just thank you for all the things that are, you're doing for us and through us and, and helping us to accomplish all that you want us to do, Lord. These are exciting times. Help us to be awake and be ready and, and do what we need to do in every area of our life. We just thank you for all that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's do our confession. As I tithe and give offerings, I'm leaving you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotion, sales and commission, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills decreased, bills paid off, Blessings and increase and greater victories in the midst of greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs. We have more than enough to give to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. I was just thinking about the giants we have in our land that are causing problems. Is COVID a giant? Bad government? A giant? Victory.
praise you, Lord. Just worship him. Just tell Jesus how much you love him. Jesus, Jesus, <clears throat> we love you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Worthy is your name, Lord. Worthy is your name, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we honor you, Lord. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You're so good, Lord. You're so good, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you, Father, for what you do for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your peace and your comfort. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Precious, precious King. Precious Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my King. My God, my King. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 Lord. <laughs> I got these three words. All is well. All is well. Well, you look at the news, you look at the shootings, and you say, God, all is not well. God said, all is well. But God... All is well. But God, all is well. That means we have to seek God. That means we have to look past all that's going on around us. That means we need to be in his presence as we are today. And we need to see him, Jesus, face to face, what he did for us. He died for us. He suffered he, a horrible death so that we could be saved from the fires of hell and all is well. We are going, we are destined to live with him for eternity and all is well. You are covered in the blood of Jesus and all is well. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ and all is well. You have been healed. You have been blessed. You have, your life has been saved. Your family has been saved. God has done done great and mighty things for you. Look at that. Thank you for it and say, yes, Lord, all is well. All is well. I will not focus on the negative. I will not focus on what's going around me, but I look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, and all is well. All is well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't keep them on all this other stuff. Yes, we need to pray. Yes, we need to be concerned. But at the same time, we're not going to worry. We're not going to fret. We're not going to let it steal our peace and our joy. All is well. It was such a beautiful, when he just said that to me so peacefully. All is well. You, all is well with you. And that's to be the way you, you live. That's the way you get through. These, these, these days, these end time days. That's why all is well because of Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on what he has done for you. Focus on who you are in Christ. What he's given you in Christ. And when you start doing that, <laughs> hey, all is well. All is well. Things are fine. Things, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm more than good. <laughs> I'm more than good. <laughs> I'm overfilled with the blessings of God. I'm overfilled with God. I'm full. I'm, 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 I'm running over. I'm running over. 
I'm running over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you running over today? Oh, I'm running over. I'm running over. I'm running over. I'm running over. Hallelujah. I am not depressed. I'm too blessed to be depressed. I'm too blessed to be depressed. I'm not going to be full of anxiety. I'm not going to be full of fear. No, 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 no. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. And I have the victory. We've talked about the victory. We have it. We're not trying to get it. We've already got it. We are, we are victorious. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you need healing today, then you just ask God to heal you right now. Someone doesn't always have to lay hands on you. You can just ask him, Father. In the name of Jesus, be healed and whole. Thank you for pain. You have to leave in Jesus' name. If there's a part of your body that's causing you pain, touch it right now and thank him for it. Thank him that you are healed and whole. In the name of Jesus, pain has to leave. Discomfort has to leave. I'm the healed of the Lord. I thank you for it. I call it done in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. You are my healer. And I receive it in Jesus' name. My needs are met in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. God is good. And he loves you all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All is well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, get your Bibles out. That's, that's what you got to have in these last days, is the Word. You got to keep the Word going in. Amen. You keep the word going in, and God's gonna, he, he's given us the victory, amen? And, and we, we don't have to be afraid. Amen. We can continue to pray. Yeah, we, we need to pray on these situations, these different people, and these things that are happening. These are people that are hurting so bad. But at the middle of all this, we can have the peace of God. We can know God and know his peace, amen, every day. Amen. So let's lift up your, your Bibles today. Let's say our confession. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I am growing in you. I believe and I pray that everyone here in this congregation is growing in you. We are your disciples. And it's a, it's a growing relationship. We're not going to stay the same. We need to grow. We need to be more aware of who we are in Christ. More aware of what you have done for us. And Lord, we know our authority. And we don't have to walk in fear, doubt, torment, anything negative, Father. Yeah, we have our challenges. I understand that. You know that. But you are there. And you help us through each and every day. And through each and every challenge that we have. And we thank you for it, Lord, that we're growing in the knowledge of you. And we're hungering for you. Hungering for for your presence, hungering for your word, Father, every day. We thank you for it, and we just receive all that you have for us today, Holy Spirit. We thank you for it. Speak to our hearts, and we receive that now. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're in our second um, message in our new series Ten qualities of a disciple. 
And the first one was um, that you're passionate about Jesus Christ. Passionate about Jesus. Now today, you have an extraordinary love for people. An extraordinary love for people. Well, first of all, let's get a couple jokes here. <laughs> and these aren't corny jokes today, okay? And I think you might like these, yeah? We, you, I see my dear buddy Glenn is ready for me today. Okay, the contest. One day a group of scientists got together and decided that man had come a long way and no longer needed God. So they picked one scientist to go and tell him that they were done with him. The scientists walked up to God and said, God, we've decided that we no longer need you. We're to the point that we can clone people and do many miraculous things. So why don't you just go on and get lost? Does that sound like society today? God listened very patiently and kindly to the man. After the science was done talking, God said, very well, how about this? Let's say that we have a man, let's say we have a man-making contest. <laughs> to which the scientist replied, okay, great. But God added, now we're going to do this just like I did back in the old days with Adam. The scientist said, sure, no problem, and bent down and grabbed himself a handful of dirt. God looked at him and said, no, 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 you get your own dirt. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I like that joke. You may have heard it before, but I think it's good. And here's another one I think you're going to like because this is like where I'm at right now. I'm endeavoring to eat better. I am trying to lose weight. So I'm very aware of these things. So this one's called Too Healthy. An elderly couple met their demise in an auto accident and were transported to heaven. The faithful couple were recognized by St. Peter and escorted into the welcome center where they began to take in all the wonder and amazement of the place. St. Peter pointed out the food court. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> food court in heaven. <laughs> and told them that they could, could of course, eat anything they, they wanted and they wouldn't have to worry about their health or gaining any weight. The husband especially began partaking of the pastries and the desserts. The wife was amazed at the beauty, the peace, and the joy, joy that she felt and commented over and over about what a nice place heaven was and how happy she felt to be there. However, the husband began to look quite grim. His wife inquired what the problem was. The husband sneered. If it weren't for you and your oat, man, your, your oat bran muffins and health food, we would have been here about 15 years ago. <laughs> Do you like that? So, but you know, my sister would be pointing her finger at me and saying, don't you dare go to heaven yet. I'm not going to let you. <laughs> she tells me that. You're not going yet. And I have no plans, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was good. That was good. So we're going to talk about an extraordinary love for people. And, you know, we want to be a true disciple of Jesus. And I thought this was so great. We went to the nursing home of the Kingswood Court. And one of the residents, she asked me the difference between a disciple and an apostle. And this is a lady who's been in denominational church all her life. And she wanted to know, and I went from the beginning, I went to Ephesians 4.11 and I explained to her the fivefold ministry gifts. She loved it. She soaked it up. I thought, praise God, this lady hasn't had this teaching all her life. She wanted to know the difference between a disciple and an apostle, and I explained it to her, and that there are still apostles today, and apostles are, many of them are missionaries, and she just enjoyed that, and I, it just blessed her. So I just want to say that. that, that I enjoy, I'm enjoying being back with the residents, and, and it's, it's good. It's a blessing. John 13, 34, and 35 John 13, 34, and 35. You know this scripture. It says, Now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to, to the world that you are my disciples. So how can you show someone that you know Jesus? By showing your love. And what does this world need right now? Love. 
we don't need to, to argue. We don't need to show how much Bible we know. We need to, oh, I know this, and I know that, and I, and I learned. No. The world needs love. And you show it by your words and by your actions. If you just speak it, that's not enough. You've got to show your love. The world needs that right now. It doesn't need a whole bunch of um, knowledge that you know. It needs love in action. 1 John 4, 7 through 8. 1 John 4, 7 through 8. You know this one too. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if you know God, then you have love. It is automatic, but sometimes love doesn't come automatic. You've got to develop it, and you've got to let it be in working in your life in full manifestation. And you do that, and you will show others how much God loves them. They'll see it through you. They're seeing God through you, through you. You are a representative of God, and you use his love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. These are all just real basic but wonderful scriptures on love. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love. Everything is built on love. And we talk about Brother Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen, be a man of faith and power, but we know that the greatest thing that made him that way was his love walk, because he loved others. He was so strong in love, and he would forgive, and he would love no matter what. That's the kind of people, that's the kind of disciples of Jesus that we need to be. Those who love regardless of the, of the situation, regardless of how treat people have treated, have treated you, you're to love. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. It, it passes knowledge. You can't in know it in your, in your brain. You have to know this in your spirit. And God will dwell in your hearts and he'll help you to comprehend that love. That love. It's so important that we have love one for another. And now let me, I'm going to get into the rubber meets the road here for a few minutes. Into the church. And then we're going to go out to the world. But the church, and I'm not saying our church, but I'm saying the body of Christ. But then I'm going to include us. We're not always going to agree on everything, right? We don't always agree on the color of the paint, the color of the carpet, how big the doors and windows should be. I can say all these things that we have talked in the board, and we took ours the color of the awning. <laughs> we didn't agree on it. The kind of, the kind of stone. All these things have had to be decided. And we haven't always agreed on it. But we all made a decision to walk in love, to get along, and to come to a final agreement. And we have done that. I believe that. And we're not going to agree on everything. You're going to have things that you like. And someone else is going to have things that you... Now, your spouse, just go back to marriage for a second. Right? Husbands and wives, do you agree on everything? No. And I just read a quote from, from Ruth Bell Graham says, if Billy and I were the same, then there didn't need to be both of us. There only needed to be one of us. She said, we didn't agree on everything. We often disagreed, but we loved each other 
so much. And so that's going to happen in the body of Christ. That's going to happen in this church. We're going to have people that don't, don't agree with each other, that do things differently than someone else does. But what are we going to do about it? Are you going to walk in love, or are you going to be, well, I'm just going to stay over here. I'll just stay away from them. Is that going to be your attitude? Should that be your attitude? No. Not in the body of Christ, and not in this church. This is going to be a church where we love each other. Praise God. Now, did that happen in the New Testament or in the Bible? Yes. And we don't have time to go through all the stories today. But let's look at two of them. Philippians 2, 4, 2 through 3. Philippians 4, 2 through 3. And I'm using the Passion Translation for this. And this is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying, I plead with you, Odia, and Syntyche, these are two ladies, to settle their disagreement and to be restored with one mind in our Lord. I would like my dear friend and burden bearer to help resolve this issue, for both women have diligently labored with me for the prize and helped in spreading the revelation of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers. All of their names are written in the book of life. So something happened between Euodia and Syntyche, and they were upset. These are born again, spirit-filled Christian leaders, ladies in the church, and they're not walking in love. And Paul had to address them. How would you like to be the person, be one of these ladies? Well, I'm going to be in the Bible forever, and that's because I wasn't walking in love with her. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> but I bet those ladies are the best of friends now in heaven. <laughs> I can't wait to go see them and go visit them, okay? Because they're there, okay? But they, I know that they resolved their differences. I believe they did. <laughs> so let me read a footnote here a little bit about this. In every church, there's often found conflict in relationships. Paul seeks to encourage these two dear women to resolve all their disagreements. Their names give us a clue. Euodia comes from a word that means a fair journey. Syntyche comes from a word that means an accident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> along, along our fair journey, we may collide with one another. <laughs> But God always has grace for restoration. Amen? So these ladies, I believe that God has restored them, okay? Now, I can't know if I can pronounce this. S-Y-Z-Y-G-O-S. Syzygos, possibly. Possibly a name, it says, in verse 3. Because he's, he's talking to somebody there. However, there's a record of any there is no record of anyone in classical or biblical Greek with this name. Some believe that Sisygos was one of the pastors of the church at Philippi. Well, that blessed man got to go talk to those ladies. <laughs> and he had to go be mediator. And he had to try to get them to, to get, get along. Okay? So I'm picking on the ladies for a second, but I'm going to pick on the men in just a minute. So we cannot allow disagreements or personality conflicts to keep us from walking in love with one another, even in our church. And how much more now do we need to be loving and kind? Even my brother, my, bro my brother-in-law's brother, Ben, who I got, we were talking yesterday, he's a wonderful believer. He said that, he said, he says, we're so thin-skinned today. We get so mad uh, with each other over the silliest things, political things, whatever. We get so upset so quick. He's talking the, about the country. And we as Christians must be walking in love like we never have before. And we are gonna, this revival's coming, people. This move of God is here. And we're going to continue to see it. But we will not allow and I'm not speaking of any instance or anything like that. I'm just telling you and preparing you and, and saying that we all have times when we get upset with somebody. Walk in love. 
And you have to put your flesh down. And God will help you to do it. Acts chapter 15, verses 36 to 41. Acts 15, 36 to 41. And we know how much we respect the Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul was a human being too. And he could get upset too. And we see that it happened. Okay? A few days later, Paul said to Barnabas, We should go back to all the towns where we told the people the message of the Lord. We should visit the believers to see how they are doing. Barnabas, Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark with them too. But on their first trip, John Mark did not continue with them in the work. He had left them at Pamphylia. So Paul did not think it was a good idea to take him this time. Paul and Barnabas had a big argument about this. This is the easy to read version, okay? So this puts it into, into our modern, modern day language. They had a big argu argument about this. It was so bad that they separated and went different ways. Barnabas sailed to Cyprus and took Mark with him. So Paul and Barnabas, great, powerful apostles, men of God, had a disagreement about John Mark because he left him before, left him in the lurch, he wanted to go home, got homesick. We don't know exactly why he left. But they had a big disagreement. I mean, they weren't talking to each other. They weren't walking in love. The Bible tells us that. The Bible don't try to cover anything up. The Bible's in there to show us, hey, deal with it. Take care of it. Don't let it get to be a big old thing. So that's what I'm saying today, is we will walk in love. We will walk in love. And, and love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. You know that. And we're going, to do, we're going to be a church of love. When people come here, they're going to see love one for another. And you've got feelings in your heart. And when you think about somebody and you, and you get these scrunchy, becky feelings, you need to deal with it. Mrs. Hagen talked to us about this at Winter Bible. And she said she had some people that she couldn't forgive. And the Holy Ghost, because she said her husband, Pastor Hagen, her father-in-law, Brother Hagen, they always had that strong love walk, and they were able to forgive and not have a problem. But she had to deal with this. And she said it took her a while. But she put her flesh down, and she worked on it till she says, when I think about those people, I don't have an angry feeling or whatsoever. So if there's anybody in, and if it's in this church or if it's anybody, I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit, deal with it. Take it and take, deal with it. Do not hold bitterness. Do not hold anything against anyone. It's for your health. It's for your good. I'm telling you, as your pastor, and I'm getting bold enough to tell you that. And you better take care of it, or it's going to cause you problems. It's going to come back and, and bite you. <laughs> and don't let it do that. Okay? Because I love you. And deal with it. Don't, deal, don't nurse it. Don't hold a grudge. Amen? So what happened here? 2 Timothy 4.11. I like this, just this little verse, but it gives us some insight. Second Timothy 4.11. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. So here's some more um, footnotes. Only Luke is with me, the beloved physician who wrote the gospel that bears his name in the Acts of the Apostles and was a constant companion of Paul's in his travels and sufferings. He says, Take Mark and bring him with me, with him, bring him with thee. Who might be at Ephesus or somewhere in Timothy's way as he came to Rome? This seems to be the same with John Mark of Jerusalem, the son of Mary, the sister of Barnabas, who was at the with Paul and Barnabas in their travels, and who was parted from them at Pamphylia, on whose account and for that reason there was so a great difference between Paul and Barnabas as to separate upon it. But now the apostle had entertained a better opinion of him and was reconciled unto him and was very desirous of his company and assistance for which he had. For he is profitable to me for ministry. Paul dealt with it. In 
and took care of it. And was able to, to, to let John Mark come and, and be a part of the ministry. So deal with it. Amen? And you'll feel so much better when you do. Walk in love with each other in spite of your differences. And you know, that's, that's not even the beginning of my message. <laughs> that's, just, that's the introduction. <laughs> but we'll keep going here. Four dimensions of love. We'll get through this. Four dimensions of love. Loving the least. John 3.16. You know this one. Loving the least. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves everyone. God loves the unlovable. We are all the unlovable before we accept Jesus as our Savior. Amen? So God loves us. Now the Bible says that our righteousness is as a filthy rags. So I tried to find the worst. It was, I didn't go out and get dirt on it. But it's one of our rags out of our drawer. I tried to find the worst looking one. But God loves us. And we need to love others. And there's going to be some rough characters come through here. I've said that before. Maybe some rough-looking youth come through here. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, I just don't think they need to be here. Well, who does need to be here then? <laughs> if, you know, while well, I go to the hospital, I guess we could only have well people there. We can't have any sick people. <laughs> so what do we need here? We need people who are hurting. We need people who need Jesus. We need transgender H B W Q T Z whatever whatever it, whatever it is God don't care I love them anyway we need to love everybody now there's a boy and there's a girl that's what God made okay but there's all these people who get themselves all mixed up and they get their alphabet all jumbled up and and we still love them <laughs> we still love them so I don't care love the unlovely and God, that's the heart of God. Love one another. Let me give you my, one of my favorite passages here. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. It's a little lengthy, but I think, it, and you know it, but I think we need to hear it every so often. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And every time I do something with the food pantry or I do something with the ministerial association and I have to, to stop what I'm doing and I have to, to call the police and, and get a background check done. Now, they, they, pretty much they said we're not supposed to take transients to the motel in Nelson anymore. We're supposed to let the police do it. But I really enjoyed doing it. I love talking to them. But anytime I did something like that, I always remembered this scripture. It says here, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, and then he will sit on his throne of glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one for another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And they will set the sheep on his right, and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison or come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, and do the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick in the prison, and you did not visit me. Then they all will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or naked, a stranger or naked or sick in, in prison and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not. You, you did not do it to me. 
and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So think about that. When you are helping someone who's hungry, when you're giving someone who needs a drink, when you're giving somebody some clothes, when you're doing something for someone who looks like and smells like something the cat drug in, you are doing it unto Jesus. You're doing it unto God. And we're supposed to love one another. We're not to, to start judging. We're to love. And I want this church to be an oasis. I want this church to be a church that welcomes everybody in here, regardless of their situation, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of their past, regardless of how they smell. We want them to know that they are loved. Now, yes, we should get, make steps to help. And sometimes even love has to be tough and say, hey, take a bath, take a shower. <laughs> you know, love has to tell some things. But we still love them. We still love people. Amen? We have to know that. We love them regardless of the status of their life. Number two, love the lost. Matthew 18, 11. Matthew 18, 11. It says, For the Son of God has come to, to save that which was lost. Jesus has come to seek and save. Remember that. Seek and save. Seek and save. Seek and save. Joe Dunnick says that all the time. Joe, seek and save. Seek and save. And he has compassion on the lost. Look at Matthew 9.36. Matthew 9.36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Like this little lamb. And he's lost. And he's trying to find his way. Do you remember that story about the, the sheep that Tony Cook? I am never going to forget that story. That sheep, and he was just covered in, it was how many, it was years that he got lost? Five years? And he hadn't been sheared in all those times, and he's just a big old ball, <laughs> you know. But it is amazing, it's amazing. But the, he found him. The shepherd found him. That's what God is trying to do. He's trying to help us, and, and we're to, to go after the lost. We're not just to stay in our own social club here in the church and, and have a high old good time. Yes, we should. Fellowship is important, and we do promote that. But we need to go invite people. And we need to go out. And we need to go out and reach them and minister to them right, right where they're at too. Amen? And we want to do more of that. I want to see more of that being done. More outreaches and such. We want to do that. But God is wanting to seek and to save those which were lost. And the little sheep. He wants us to be moved with compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion. That's what we need to do. It needs to be from the heart. And, we, and you know, if you don't feel compassion for somebody, start praying for them, and you will. And if it's hard for you to forgive somebody like we talked about, pray for them, and you will. That will help. That will help your heart to be changed. You know, we want to change everybody else. Well, change yourself, and that, that, that's a big enough job for you. I got enough work with this guy. Why should I try to change all of you? But I need to be the best pastor that I can be to help you. Instead of trying to change all of you. I need to change me and get better and get closer to God. Amen? Amen. Matthew 9, 9 through 13. Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And this is the message translation. Jesus saw a man at his work collecting taxes. 
His name was Matthew. Jesus said, come along with me. Matthew stood up and followed him. Later, when Jesus was eating supper at Matthew's house with his close followers, a lot of disreputable characters came and joined them. When the Pharisees saw him keeping this kind of company, they had a fit and lit into Jesus' followers. What kind of example is this from your teacher, acting cozy with crooks and riffraff? Jesus, overhearing, shot back. Who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? Go figure out what this scripture means. I'm after mercy, not religion. I'm here to invite outsiders, not coddle insiders. I like that. <laughs> Jesus loves those who are hurting, those who need his help. Jesus doesn't care about your past. He loves you. And he loves us, but he loves the lost. He loves those out there in the community that we need to, to, to help. So let's be genuinely moved with compassion. Even when we see things, you know, like, oh, I can't believe that. Well, we need to love them right where they're at. And God changed you so he can change them too, right? Amen. Amen. Number three. This is another biggie. Love cross-culturally. Love cro loving cross-culturally. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their his hostility. He came and preached Peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we, have, we both have access to the Father and by one Spirit. God, he made the, brought the Jews and the Gentiles together. You know, and this, this song, and may, I don't, I don't, maybe the, the woke culture doesn't like it. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You know, I don't care. God loves everyone. And we need to just not be so focused on what color our skin is. It don't matter. It's the heart. God looks through. I don't care if you're white, black, polka dot, purple, whatever. God loves, that should be the way that we see people. We just love you. We just love you. Whoever you are, it don't matter. It doesn't matter your culture. It doesn't matter who you are. I love you. I care for you. My heart. This is that special Valentine's we gave my mom. I think I gave it to her 30-some years ago. But this is your heart. This is your heart. You don't see color. You don't see culture. You don't see racism. You see love. And we can love. And I'm so glad. That, that was one thing I was so thankful for and excited about when I went to Rama. Growing up in Nebraska, you don't see people from other cultures. But there was a boy in, in school, and he was a, um, from Laos, the country of Laos, L-A-O-S. His name was B. And, and people made fun of him. The kids in school. And because, you know, he was trying to speak English, but we became good friends. Because he lived in Carleton, and, and, and B. Vang, and Don and Kathy probably, I don't know if Don would remember him, but I became his friend. Because I, boy, a kid from Laos? This Nebraska kid thought that was pretty interesting. I still remember him. I don't know what happened to him, but I befriended him way back then. And just, I was always that way. I don't care who, where you're from or who you are. I want to know about you. And, and I'm so glad now through Rama, 
I have African American friends who I'm so close to, and people from all around the world that I love and care about. I don't see color, I don't see race. I see God and I see love. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We're, and I just, this is, my, this is my thing. And I love the movie Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> my aunt, Betty, is the one who told me about that movie. She went to it. She says, you've got to see this movie called Driving Miss Daisy. She, and I'm driving her all over the place, my aunt. And then we, she'd say, driving Aunt Betty, driving Aunt Betty. <laughs> I loved it. And, and the part of the movie that I, makes me cry every time I think about it is when Miss Daisy started having dementia. If you haven't watched the movie, you won't understand. But those who've watched it, you'll, you'll understand. And Hoke was an African-American. He became her driver, Morgan Freeman. Wonderful actor. I may not agree with his political views, but I, I think he's a great actor, okay? And Jessica Tandy, what another beautiful, wonderful actress. And here she is in the nursing home in the 60s, and she's using her walker to get around, and, and, and Hope's getting old too, and, his son, and her son brought him there, and they sit, and, and, and he helps feed her pie, and I don't know if it's the same time. I think that's when it, she says, she says, Hope, you're my best friend. You're my best friend. This little white privileged lady told this African-American guy that he, she, he was her best friend. That touched my heart. That was just the love of God. He would, she was tr terrible to him at, at first. She treated him terrible. She didn't want to drive her. And she was so rude to him, but he wore her down. He wouldn't stop. He was relentless. I'm going, to, I'm going to carry you, Miss Daisy. He means in the car. But, and she taught him how to read and write. It was, I just love that movie. It's, it's a great... What's that? She was Jewish. That's right. And she was a retired teacher. So she teaches this middle-aged man how to read and write. It's, it's, it's a beautiful story. If you haven't watched that movie, you should. It touches my heart. And that's how I, that's how I said, just get all... Look, people to sit down and watch Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> we should be, and then all the racism should be gone. If you if you follow that movie, it'd be gone. <laughs> okay, I gotta get going here. All right, number four, loving my enemies, loving my enemies. Matthew five forty three to forty eight. Okay, I'm gonna hurry here. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you gr greet your brethren only, what do you do more than... What do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And this is talking about being mature as your Father in heaven is mature. But he says to love your enemies. Jesus meant that. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That's not what the world does. We fight back. We slander each other. We get mad. We get even. You know, do we, 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 we just say horrible, rotten, rude things to people. That's not the way we're supposed to act. The culture tries to get into the church. We can't allow that. We have to do what Jesus said. Love them. Pray for them. When you start praying for someone, it will change you. I believe it will change them too, but it changes you. And your thoughts and your feelings about that person will change too. God will help you. Amen? Romans 12, 17 to 21. Romans 12, 17 to 21. It says, do not repay anyone 
evil for anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap excuse me, burning coals on his head. Do not overcome do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, obviously, the Bible's not trying to tell you to go get some burning coals or get some charcoal, go out to your grill and light the charcoal and let it, let it, let it cook for a little while. And then someone who's treating you bad, just go get some burning coals and then heap them on your head. Is that what the Bible is saying? No. It is an idiom or a metaphor. It's kind of like um, we say someone had egg on his face or I put my foot in my mouth. You know, I literally do that? No. But it means, and this is, there's a lot of different opinions here on different scholars, but the one I think it says it means that when returning of evil for evil, revenge, you can return good for evil, you will shame your enemy by not wreaking vengeance on him. He was just like, oh, I can't believe he was treating me good. He treated me good. He wasn't mean. Why did he do that? Oh, there must be something different about him. What is that? And I think that's what, I, that's what to me, it means, you know, that, oh, boy, I better just watch my actions. I, I'm not treating him very good. It, it, you got get the attention by showing him that. It's, oh, yeah, I'm a, I should be ashamed of how I treated them when they treat me that, that well, instead of just reacting and, and being mean to me, too. So I, I believe that's what I believe. It truly means there. So let God's love flow in you like a river. Let that love flow every day. Let the love of God flow in you. Let it flow out of you. Let it just ooze out of you. Let, and um, Tim and I went to Buffalo Bill's ranch there in North Platte. It's been years since I've been there. Scouts Rest Ranch. And I paid a little more attention maybe than last time. They had a little pond out there. They said it used to be bigger, but this home was built about 1886, is that right? Something like that. And there was this pond there, and they didn't have refrigeration yet, so they, they used the, the um, ice in the, in the um, wintertime. They cut blocks of ice, and they had an ice house. But also, they said, too, they had a little cellar, but it was close enough to the pond that that coolness of that water affected that ice house and the vegetable house, the vegetables and such, because there was an ice house and then there was another place with the vegetables. And it kept it cool enough in there. So that affected everything around it. That pond was an ecosystem, they kind of had an ecosystem there, and that pond helped with everything. And your love walk will affect your surroundings. Your love walk will affect your job, your home, your family, your church, Everything, everything apart about you, your love walk will be in effect wherever you go. It will be a, it can, your love walk or your lack of a love walk will be part of your character. You, people will know you by your love or your lack of love. If you can think of somebody <laughs> right away probably that has a lack of love, but you can think of somebody who has so much love. And you have just like these warm feelings for them when you think about it. And then the other person, when you think about, oh, I, I just want to avoid them. Because they just never, they're always mad. They're always, they never can say anything good about anybody. I'm not trying to think of anybody like that. I'm just saying, don't you be like that. Let the love of God be flowing through your life. And we're going to end with the words, this is one of my favorite hymns. I'm not going to sing it. But I'm, I'm going to read it, and I do it every so often because I just love it. It's called, The Love of God is, far, is Greater Far. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bows down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. 
O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When hoary times shall pass away, and earth thrones and kingdoms fall, when men on who here refuse to pray, on rocks and hills and mountains call, God's love so sure shall still endure, all measureless and strong. Redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels' song. And then my favorite verse, Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every, were every stock on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. To try to write the love of God would drain all the oceans of the world because his love is so beyond what we could ever comprehend. So let that love of God be in you today. Be a disciple of Jesus with extraordinary love. Have extraordinary love in your life. Like it says on the front of our handout sheet, we are not called by God to do extraordinary things, but to do ordinary things with extraordinary love. That should be each one of us. God, you know, and, and God will, he'll do miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles. But most of the time, it's just doing those ordinary things every day that you might think are mundane, but he will do extraordinary things with people when it's done in love. Let's, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this message, that this message went out today. And it's from my heart, Lord. And I pray that it just takes root into everyone that's listened to it today, those here at Living Faith Fellowship Church, those watching on Facebook, Father, that they would truly grow in their love with you and with others, with other Christians, with the lost, with those who are just not very lovely. Father, help us to be a man and a woman of God, of love. Help us to love at all times. Thank you, Father. We need your help, Lord. Forgive us for the past times when we may have gotten upset with somebody. And Father, if there's anybody in this church that's upset with anybody else, I thank you that they'll take care of it today. I don't care where they're at, if it's someone else from this church or some anywhere. If, there's, if anyone has odd against anyone, Father, right now we ask you to forgive us. And we just say we hold nothing over against anyone. We thank you, Father, that we are going to love each other. We're going to be a beacon of love and hope in this church. And we're going to love people, love others at all times. Thank you for the love of God that's been poured into our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We thank you for it, Lord. I pray for each person here. I thank you for it. Just say this after me. Say, I'm a love person. I love others. I have the love of God living in me. And I'm going to love all the time. I refuse to be offended. I refuse to be angry. I will forgive and forget, and, forget. And, go and go forward with God. With God. I'm, a I'm a loving, kind person. I will love at all times. Love all times. The, love the love of God is like a river, like a river. flowing in me. Flowing in and I'm sloshing over, I'm sloshing over. With, that love. with that love. And that love is going to hit a lot of people. <laughs> and I'm going to be a loving person all the time. With my spouse, with my children, with my fellow workers, with everyone around me. Help me to be that person who walks in love. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And we're just going to continue here in prayer. If there's anybody who doesn't know Jesus, if they've never been born again today, 
then you need to do that right now. You need to ask Jesus to come in your heart and be your Lord and Savior. And this is, we're going to pray that prayer. We're going to have everyone repeat that with me. Dear Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus, and be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and for cleansing me from all sin. Jesus, you're my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. And I will serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, then make sure you get yourself into a Bible-believing church. This is a church that you can come to. And Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday evenings at 7. We love you. God loves you. And we care about you. And we are a church of love. We love you so much. God bless you. Okay. Do we have some prayer requests? Yes, Kathy. Uh, I'm going to have you uh, come to congregation about this. Say it again. Yeah, Ricky Smith passed away from in Nebraska, and we will be having a fun have the funeral for him this Wednesday, the 21st, at um, 10 a.m. at Williams Funeral Home. So Ricky was a resident there for many, many years. So we're going to remember Ricky this Wednesday. Thanks, for, Kathy, we remind everybody. Yes, Vanessa. Uh, Jane Jensen lost her older sister, Judy. Oh. I just talked to Tim Covey, and he was telling me that she was close to death, to dying. Okay, so this would be Diane, Di Diana Covey's sister, Judy. Judy Kincher. Yeah, she was in Lincoln. Huh? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll pray, be praying for the Judy Kincher family. Yes, Janice. Okay. Um, Don, I saw your hand up. So her husband was Roy. 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 Anybody else? Yes, Darlene. So we just need to pray for her, a miracle then. Okay. Anybody else? I want to put Verna, Horton, Verna Ray Horton. She was from our church in McCook. Tim and I went and saw her. She had sepsis, was in the hospital. She's back home, but she's very weak. And she knew us. She could say a little bit, but she just wasn't. Laverna that I know. So I want I believe in God for complete recovery. And they let us in. We had a call and make an appointment. But thank God we were able to do that. Anybody else? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to Matthew 18, 19, we are agreeing and we're thanking you for Norm Stinson, Father. Thank you for touching him. He's in the hospital right now and um, broke his arm. We just thank you for, for healing that arm, healing his whole body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father. We also lift up Greg Carter, who was in the hospital th this week. Um, dehydration and a few issues, Father, just... Touch him, Father, with your healing power. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Father, for strength in his body. We thank you for it. 
Father, we lift up um, the Judy Kincher family, Diana and Dwayne, and but all the all the siblings, Father, the whole family, Father, we lift them up to you. Thank you for the comfort that we know that she's with you, Father. We thank you that you comfort and you help them, in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, that John's MRI will be a good report. Thank you for the healing power of God. Thank you for the health of God springing forth speedily in Him. And thank you that will show show that he's, the medicine's helping and he's doing well. We thank you for it, Father. We are agreeing together. And we just lift up, lift up the Jean Skirdlant family, Father. Roy and, and the daughter and, and, the, and those, Father, just thank you for helping them. Thank you that you're there for them right now. Hold them in your, in your arms, Father. We thank you for your comfort. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then we lift up Jeannie Howe, Father, and we thank you for a miracle Thank you, Lord, for that heart, that you are the strength of her heart, Father God. Touch that heart right now in the name of Jesus. She will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We thank you for it. It will beat like it's supposed to be. We thank you for it. It will function in the perfection which you created to function. Father, we thank you for Vernon Ray Horton. Thank you, Lord, for total restoration. Restore her to health, Father God. Her health is springing forth speedily. We thank you, Father. Her strength is coming back. And, and, and the Vernaray, the fiery Vernaray that I, that I know and love, Father God, we thank you for that. We thank you for her, Father. We, and, and we just thank you for just guiding and leading the, the doctors and nurses and everyone who cares for her. We thank you for it. And we, we receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming today. And we will be back on Facebook Live this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. So God loves you so much. God bless you. Have a great week. And we'll see you Wednesday night. God bless.